Greetings, everyone. Are you surprised? Yeah, today we are going to be talking about the 3 3 and some newer uh, AI Jiseki. It's something I wanted to do for a while, but I figured that it also might be a thing that's a little bit controversial. I tend to give opinions, and you know, not everyone likes those opinions. But today, I'm going to try to remain impartial while we're talking about the 3 3. Over on my other monitor, which you cannot see, I've got a list of examples that we're going to be going uh, over from my own games, from professional games. We're going to be examining what used to be played. We're going to be examining what is played now. We're going to be comparing them both uh, from my point of view and then from an AI's perspective, seeing the differences between the two. We're going to examine some old variations and why they don't quite work even though they look like they should from where we're now with the whole AI perspective thing. We're going to see how the majority of players that we're going to encounter, those being amateur players, are trying to take these ideas from the AI and implement it into their own games and see how they're getting it right, how they're getting it wrong. And hopefully if you're a person who is either responding to 3.3s, you'll have a better idea of how to do that nice and safely. And if you're a person who wants to use those in your own games, then you'll have some very, very noticeable pitfalls that you don't want to fall into, and you will understand why those pitfalls exist and why those are bad, even if they are kind of alluring and tempting you to play them. Just like it's alluring to go to the one-stop shop for in-person, go over at baduk.club and check out the map for where you might find Go clubs and Go players in your area to have a nice in-person game of Go with. And while you're there, you can always opt to pick up a set either to play with people that you find over on Club or just for studying professional games, which I personally recommend. Whatever your reason for going there, Club's got you covered. Go check them out if you haven't already done so. As always, thanks to them for in part sponsoring these videos. All right, now, so we're all on the same page. Let's painstakingly go through and have a nice little baseline to understand what we're talking about when we're talking about AI, Jaseki, and 3.3. It's like, what, what are those things? Well, the concept is very simple. Uh, opening up on the 4.4 point has been something of a staple for a very, very long time now. And going into the 3.3 has been very situational up until now. Uh, when you do that, black gets to choose which way to block. And from there, there's noticeable uh, variations that can be played depending on what each player wants to go ahead and uh, play for. Are we playing for Sente? Are we playing to get our cornerback? Are we playing just to have a solid position? Like all, all of these questions have to be then, you know, asked kind of back and forth. And then you've got a variation there. Now, up until recently, playing something like this has been a sort of last ditch effort to do something in a corner that it might be otherwise unsafe to approach. Why has that been typically the uh, opinion? Well, it has to do with the territory involved. Uh, if you see here, the territory involved for white, for example, could be as little as about eight points of territory. And the influence that is going to be granted to black from a particular invasion is usually regarded as being easily over eight points, usually about twice that. So why would you go and approach something and give your opponent twice amount of terror twice amount of the territory? that you're going to get instead. Now, to some of you people who are good at math, the answer is already self-apparent. If white is getting eight points here, and as I said, if black is getting twice as much, 16 points, well, as about as much as a corner enclosure. Hmm, things are starting to take shape here. So if my opponent is gonna get a corner enclosure and take 16 points, or if I invade him, I get eight points and he still only takes 16 points. Well, I've minus eight from that 16, so it's like taking that corner enclosure and only giving him eight points. Now we're starting to see the story take place and slowly realize how we're getting to this position. The danger, of course, being what if our opponent 
gets more than the 16 points? What if our opponent, for example, gets to extend here? Well, then things start going downhill because if my opponent is actually going to be getting all of this because I've given him this wall, well, how many points is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, that's bad. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay, that's worse. And room to grow. Dear God, it looks like we've made a mistake. So clearly, this isn't going to happen anymore. Surely. So one of the questions that we'd want to ask the AI to see, well, what, how, how about why this is not a thing? Or what can we do about this and all of those sorts of questions? Which we will be looking at in a minute. So before we delve into the meat of this lecture, uh, I do want to point out and kind of highlight just how drastic the difference is between how we previously used to think about like the 3-3 verse, how we think about it now. For example, it, people have been trying to make, you know, 3-3 stuff work for a very long time. Those of you who follow my Legend 88 series, which is probably one of the best uh, series on my channel, uh, you, you'll, you'll remember this guy, right? Good old At Night. He was black here, playing against a professional who was white, and he kept trying to come up with a way to do like those early, like exclusive early three threes in his game. And, you know, th this kind of stuff we would just like, you know, laugh and scoff at like, ah, 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 what a crazy person. I can't believe he was trying to do that. What a weirdo. And sure enough, he would three three. And then when his opponent uh, took a corner, he would just try it again. Right? Anytime, anytime he saw a 4-4, he would just go in 3-3 three, three, over and over and over again. So, that kind of idea was just universally accepted as, dude, you're out of your gourd. What are you, what are you doing? Have, have you lost your mind? That doesn't work. We're in the era of, you know, respecting the frameworks there, sonny boy. You don't do this early 3-3 three, three stuff. And yet today... We are now in a position where if we saw this, we'd be like, yeah, okay, that's good. That's, uh, that's an even result right there. Mm-hmm, 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 sure. Yeah, you could, you can Tengen into 3-3. Three, three. Even the AI says this ain't, this ain't gonna be, uh, that bad. More on that towards the end of the video. We'll be returning to this. But I do wanna, I did wanna set this up immediately as a kind of a clash in how ideas then and now have changed and are coming together and why this 3-3 uh, three, three topic can be a little bit polarizing to some people. Because some people remember the old way where this is just universally hated and reviled. And uh, there's the new people who say this is like the only way to play nowadays. And as, as always, when you have topics that are like that polarizing, the truth is, you know, usually somewhere more in the middle. But this does highlight the shift in thought. Before, never, can't. And now, sure, you can. So huge, huge, huge switch there if you weren't aware of it. Now you are. Get it? Got it? Good. Then let's continue. All right. So the first thing that I actually want to do is verify that the AI does want us at all to actually do early 3-3s. Three because right now, I admit we, we are making a couple of assumptions that it even wants to do that. So let's just verify that that's true. So here into here, just a really quick standard opening like so. Go ahead and hit the live analysis feature. And sure enough, we are seeing first and second suggestions from the AI is to go ahead and hit either of the three three points. Okay. Now, you'll notice on the right hand side here that the game is 49% for black and 51% to white. White has a slight advantage because of Comey. Not as crazy as it used to be, but uh, still, there we go. And if we go ahead and do the 3-3 three, three like so, and we take all of the AI's first suggestions, there we go. We remain 48.3, 51.7. Absolutely fine. Great. Now, the first thing we want to do after we have established, okay, AI does want us to 3-3. Three, three. We verified it. There's an AI right above my head. AI Sensei, you can find my personal link in the description down below if you want to use these tools in your own games. But the next obvious question is, how different is that than what we want to play? 
Well, interesting question. So we play this and we see a 51% chance for white right now. So white still has a little bit of an advantage. And what, what, what have we actually done here? What have we actually done? Well, um, we've obtained a couple of points of territory, like we already mentioned. Over here, we got like about close to seven. Did we get more than seven here? One, two, three, four, five, six, eh, about seven still. About seven still. Okay, okay, okay. What else do we have here? Well, we know that there's follow-ups. And not really much room to grow, you'll notice, right? That's the first thing that we're talking about in a hot second. You notice there's not much growing here. We're on the second line now as black. Going to be a little bit difficult to grow from that position. But more on that in a minute. So if we're playing this, we're getting a little amount of territory. It's hard to grow. We've given away influence and apparently sent it to our opponent. Hmm. Okay. Let's contrast that something more traditional. What does the AI say about that? Is it really, really bad? And if so, by how much? Again, no assumptions. Let's just look at uh, the data. We approach, and we're going to play something like this one. Now, I'm on the fifth with the play next, because if I play this, I know eight is kind of questionable. But let's just go ahead and play something like this one. What does the AI say about this position? Live analysis, help me out here, sir. Okay, now we're at 54.4. So, huh. The one where the black three threes ends with, what was it, 51.7? And if we do not do that, then we get a 54.4. Huh, interesting. Interesting. So really, it's a 2% difference and some change. Okay, well, is the board drastically changing and uh, making my life easier if I take those extra 2 or 3%, let's say round it, 3 percentage. If we take those extra 3 percentages uh, and give them to white, like we're doing here apparently, we've given white 3% uh, more chance to win. And is my life easier or harder? Well, you see, therein lies the thing. In this very, the other variation, we're here on the second line and we can't really grow anymore. Here we still can, right? The bottom is obtainable and I can picture enclosures here because I've got an extension. So I, I, I can still get points. So if I want to play a game where I want to deny territory, I can 3-3 three, three and fight for those two or three percentage points. But let's say I don't want to do that. What if I want to play a Moyo game of some kind of framework game? How much am I giving up? I'm giving up two percentage points. That's not a lot, is it? I don't know. Let's find out. Again, no assumptions. All right. Here's a game, one of my top games that I have uh, uploaded currently to AI Sensei. 8 Don versus 8 Don. So strongest game I could get my bloody hands on. And you'll see, because I have it set to mistakes over 5%, I'm seeing a lot more mistakes than 5%. Like I see Black made a 20 point mistake, a 20% mistake here. I'm seeing 19%, 9%, 6% uh, there. If we filter it for over 2%, then even more little guys are popping up on both sides. Like literally all of these are mistakes that were over 2% for both players. So. I know even when I'm at top game, top form, playing against strong opponents I can, eight dons, we're still going back and forth, making mistakes way over 2%. So for me personally, once we realize that is a fact, I can see it right here in front of me. Is that, 
is that 2% really going to make that large of a difference? If it gives me a reason. Like, if I want to play a framework game, and I can play this way for a framework game, and I'm only losing 2 or 3 percentage points, that seems on par for a completely normal game. So that, to me, is even based on the data that I'm seeing in front of me. Which is my first thing that we can identify for you people who maybe you don't want to play the 3-3. Maybe you want to play framework games as well. Well, we can see definitively you're only going to lose a couple of percentage points. We can see that that's normal, of course, normal game. So you don't have to 3-3. Keep doing it. It's fine. But if you want to, note only two or three percentage points is what you're buying by doing that. I'm going to repeat that because it'll be very important in a minute. You're only buying yourself two or three percentage points by doing that. So once I establish that, the next obvious question to me is, well, maybe, maybe pros play at a higher level. So it makes sense why they're all doing the 33 thing because it's rare for two or three percentage points to make that big of a difference in their games. But that's an assumption. So let's verify that too. All right, so here I have loaded up Shin Jin So versus Byun Sang Gil. Now, I'm not cheating and taking some random newly risen Wandan professionals and being like, ha ha ha, see, look, <laughs> and using that to fit a narrative. I'm taking Shin Jin So, who is the pinnacle of, of currently, currently, the pinnacle of human playing. He is at the very, very top of his game. He's got an insane win ratio of close to 75%. The guy's insane. So he is super, 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 super strong. Literally one of the strong, literally the strongest human on the planet for this game. And a lot of your eyes are probably already really, really wide while you're looking at this right-hand uh, graph where we look at percentage mistakes over 2%. Shin Jin So is white. Byun Sang Gil, who won the game, is black. And you'll notice white is making 5%, 6, 8, 18, 27, 33. His opponent doing the same thing. 22, 13, 22, 23, 5. So no, we can we can put that idea to rest. We can absolutely 100% put that idea to rest as well. Uh, human players, even at the very, very top level, make a lot of mistakes, sometimes way higher than 2%. So not even humans at top level are playing at a level where that 2% makes or breaks the entire game, because you just saw 20% mistakes from both of them. So based on data from my games, based on data from professional games, I would say that the 2% overall does not matter. And it all, what matters is what kind of game you're looking to play. What kind of games do those 3-3 three, three games go into versus what kind of games does not doing the 3-3 three, three go into and which one do you want to play? And I'm not saying you have to be one player or the other. I'm saying like like me, for example, I play a lot of games because I'm like, I'm teaching, uh, I'm recording for my videos, I'm streaming, playing a lot of games. And I, I personally like variety. I don't like playing the same thing over and over and over again. So, you know, maybe you three through a couple of games and you're like, you know, I'm, I'm in for something different. Maybe I'll play uh, San Rinse or low Chinese or mini Chinese or micro Chinese, or maybe I'll go and see what, how uh, Cosmic Go does for a while and start off on Tengen. And you can do that too. You know, you don't have to be in one camp or the other. You don't have to get tribal over this. Do whatever you're in the mood for, would be my opinion. But that does raise a question. What kind of games can we expect if we're doing the whole 3-3 thing? Well, Glad you asked. So here's the Shinjin So game uh, versus Byun Sang Gil. 
and we can see that uh, Byun Sung Gil went ahead and did the 3-3, okay? Played the variation, all top picks that we saw from the uh, AI recommends. White counters and does the exact same thing. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, then we're going to go and take some territory. Righto, righto, righto. Taking away the extension off the base. Okay. Going to go ahead and fight it. So we're playing to block the influence here now. Right, right, right. Going to go ahead and take Sente in 3-3. So it looks like we're taking the corners and then fighting to develop or take away the 3-3. Or take away the influence that uh, has been given away from that. Let's see if that continues. Let's go ahead and grab another game here. This one, again, one of the top games. Park chung Wan versus Shin Jun So. Let's see how this plays out. 3-3. Uh, three, three. Same thing. Okay. 3-3. Three, three. Okay. Same thing. Different variation, but okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Expand it away. Once again, we're fighting heavily to uh, either control and develop off the wall or reduce. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, so these games seem to be going all in on, uh, like, after the corner stuff. We're then going to hard fight over uh, either building from the wall or reducing the ability to build from uh, the, those walls. That, that seems to be where this is going. Same thing here. We have influence, bam, White's trying to build from the little wall he's been obtaining. So that seems to be how this game is going. Let's look at another one. Here we go, another 9P game. Enclosure, okay, the corner enclosure, uh, two space high is very, very common. There's 3-3 three, three inbound, yep, 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 yep. And then counter 3-3, three, three, just like we've been seeing, okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then trying to reduce the wall, yep, yep, yep. Uh, some more 3-3 three, three action going on. And then fighting over the uh, wall again. Okay, okay, okay. That seems, to be the, that seems to be the theme here. Seems to be the theme here. Uh, last game, another 9P game. There goes the 3-3. Three, three. There goes the 3-3. Three, three. Okay, there goes another 3-3. Three, three. Yep, yep, yep. There's the last 3-3. Three, three. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now we're going to... Oh, this might have been a bad example. This is just going to be playing... Uh, okay, a little bit more of a Jisaki, but yeah, we're trying to use and limit and then use and limit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it seems like these games follow a pattern. Uh, take corner, build wall, try to reduce wall. Okay, 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 cool. What else can we examine from this game? I'm seeing that... Black seems to be building in this particular game. Let's go back to the Shinjin Soen real quick. So from here, we're seeing that we're, we're seeing something interesting. We're seeing that black is taking points and white's being able to potentially take points as well. Okay, that's fascinating. Yeah, you see black's developing something and white's developing something. All right, interesting. Is that true in all the games? Here it seems white's developing something. Okay, yeah. And here it would appear that black isn't really developing anything and it's just constantly trying to attack. It, it should note that this is also a game that black loses. So the next obvious question that comes to my mind now that we've seen how like professionals are doing things, uh, the question is how does that compare and contrast to uh, what, for example, amateurs are doing with it? And my one, my end games uh, works quite well with this because I got three three. I played an old school variation. Now you can see over on the right here, and I'll highlight this so it's easy to check out what we're what I'm referring to here. This thing over here, this little percentage box, uh, you can see Black's chance to win versus White's. And you can see from here, I'm going to go down a little bit because I'm playing old school variations, but I'm only going down like barely any, right? Barely any, barely any. So 57%, and sure enough, is this an AI suggestion? This could be the first bad move. Nope, it's the AI move. So, okay. 3-3 three, three there as well. Okay, okay. So, still even game. Still even game. Fantastic. 
huh, in the Joseki, he immediately made a 3% a mistake. Well, that's kind of weird. Because I thought we were 3-3 three, three to get the 2 and 3%. But, I mean, obviously, because we don't play on that kind of level, instantly he just gave that back to me. So, okay, happy days. I'm making a mistake, too, because I'm trying to be solid. Am I on basic, man? No, I'm on Dwyron. All right, 7%. Oof. But I'm still ahead according to AI. He extends. That's fantastic. I play here, which is an AI move. So now, what happens if... Okay, this is going to be exaggerated. I'm going to do a trial board real quick. It's going to hate this. Shut up, I know. What happens if... I have a board position like this, and I'm able to just build this. If I'm able to build this area, it looks like we go to 80%. Obviously, he wouldn't play a move that's just passing, but it gives you an idea of what Black has to do next. Holy jeepers creepers, he has to reduce me. Okay, okay, okay. How, how does he reduce me? Instantly a 10% mistake. That's the, he just threw away both of his 3-3 advantages. Because this gave him about 3. This gave him about 3. So, all right. He's up, you know, 5 to 6%. And then drops it with 10 immediately. And what's truly fascinating about this, and we see this reflecting with how uh, professionals play, even the AI is saying, don't reduce him yet. There's still corners that you can do. Right? In a lot of professional games, when you see this, which we just saw a little while ago, one player gets something, another player gets something. Very rarely does a player not get anything. And it's because every stone has value, even the wall. You know? Just as these have value to get corners, these have values to get, you know, maybe some side and some potential. And trying to immediately take all of that away nets an instant 10.6% loss, negating everything that you've done just now. Now, I could show you game after game after game where this exactly happens in my games. They 3-3 three, three me. They give me a lot. There's other things they could do and they try and take away everything instantly, and time and time again, it's the exact same mistake. So if you are a 3-3 player, cool. But you have to recognize when it's good to reduce, because if you do it too early, you're screwed. If you do it too late, you're screwed there too, to be honest, because there's a lot of potential here. So first thing you have to learn is when to reduce at what time. And here, for example, we can take a look at it wants to do, let's just take one variations. Okay, I'm not, right, yeah, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna 3-3. Three, three. No, I wouldn't, 3-3 three, three is the thing. Um, I'd have to go with something different because yeah, I, I wouldn't do that. Let's, let's open a trial board instead. Let's do the, th the this thing again. Uh, what would I do instead? Um, God, that's, t uh, that's tough to know. I might, just play something like this. Give me analysis here, please. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Expected. Mm-hmm. And then I might do something... Yeah, I could I could see a move like A. I could see a move like A. I could see getting kicked because he likes ter he likes the, the, the stuff there. I see this more than the high, so let's go with that one, too. And then, and then building. Sure, yeah. And then building. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Not sure I'd be able to juggle it like this. But okay, it looks like now when now we're starting to reduce. Now is is when the reducing game begins. Okay. Okay. Yeah, now now it's pondering. Maybe we should start reducing now that your opponent is, you know, trying to expand across all the things. So the timing on when to uh, to when to reduce. Super important, super important. 
Too early, you screw yourself of your early advantage. Too late, it, same thing. So that right there is good to know. Very, very good to know. And you, you can see this graph kind of reflecting it uh, here because he tries to, you know, struggle to uh, do some reduction or whatever. It doesn't like my move either. I don't care. But you can see I'm already at like an 80% here. Yeah, and you can see here, fast forwarding a little bit, the actual gaming gets a little bit worse because he's got a weak group here. Uh, he's made two of them, essentially. I've got a bunch of points. So he only has a 10% chance to win at this point because he overreacted to my influence, played into it way too early, and, and then it kind of crumbled. And that, that tends to happen a lot in amateur games. So if you maybe do that a lot as well as a 3-3 player, you might want to consider backing off from that a little bit. Um, e even the AI is not very happy with uh, what you're doing there. Okay, so here's another one of my games where I got 3-3'd. Three right here we go. And I approach, we'd play the Jisaki. Um, interestingly enough, white's at 60% now because just because, this is another thing that uh, is often misunderstood. Just because the AI recommends 3 3 a lot doesn't mean that it wants you to play 3 3 or 3 4 points. It still likes the, uh, the, the, the 4 4 point. It views it as uh, an even result for the most part. That doesn't mean that you have to play 3 4 points if you're going to be a 3 3 or because you think you're going to get something over on your opponent when you know you 3 3 and they can't 3 3 you back. Uh, that, that's not what even the AI is saying is actually. Uh, good and happening there but it's still pretty even it, it, it's still fine like it, this is below the 70 to 75 percent threshold so still still even a still even game because in three threes me i blocked some expanding it doesn't like the fact that i i, I you know didn't play this and yeah it, it hits me for a three percenter i it's fine he didn't do a small night so he gets he gets hit a little bit too Going and expanding, getting hit a little bit there as well. Don't really care. Uh, it plays into here. I'm just playing a Jiseki. Doesn't like it, but that's fine. Now, immediately we see this graph here start to really ramp up. And the reason why is because there's a chain of mistakes that are going to occur here. That because I have so much thickness that he just gave me, um, it, it's going to be hard to come back from. So we have this mistake here. And you can see I'm actually playing a line of uh, AI second for the most part. Where he's giving me a nice lovely, lovely little wall here. But there's nothing he can... You'll, you'll notice right now we're at that 75% threshold. And what have I done? I've played some Jiseki that even it doesn't fully recommend right now. But because he gave me so much thickness and then made a mistake, he's at an absolute behind position from here. And now we can contrast that, for example, to let's say, let's say, let's say, let's say, he didn't do this. Let's say he played trial board, played here, and then I would back off, and he grabbed this one, and I enclosed. What do, is the analysis of this position? Analysis here says uh, it, it's almost pretty much tied up. 62. 62. All right, so then let's go ahead and also grab this one. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And as, as actual game, yep, 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 we're going to play here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we're going to, I mean, I would want to play B, but sure, let's be conservative and play this. And then I guess he just runs out. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. And then... I still want to play this. But yeah, we can see a noticeably easier position uh, to handle. He's not at the 75% threshold at the moment. He's still picking up territory, which is fantastic. And I'm not solid everywhere to the point where he can still even lean on me right now. And you can see i got to be careful. If I just answer this, making a mistake here, it's saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I keep jumping out, then I have done killed myself. So he even has nice ways forward where he's counterattacking, and White's falling behind very, very quickly. 
contrast that to the actual game, he 3-3'd me and I just uh, approached him and played a Jusecki, and suddenly he's in a game-losing position because he didn't play like the exact right sequence of a different Jusecki. Right? Like right here, we're at 90% now. This is the one game. And I didn't really do anything besides answer his moves and then play a Jusecki. But that, that's all I did. And that's the danger of giving away thickness. Once you give away a lot of thickness, even the game is saying, you need to get the next part right or you lose. But that's weird. Because we just looked at the other one, the other branch, and we didn't have that same narrative. We weren't hearing, get this next part exactly right or you lose. That was still very much almost a 50-50, okay, 60-40 very much a very even game. Which is also why I'm perfectly fine continuing to just play 4-4s four and be invaded. Because if I play... If we both play decent results, the game's staying about even, and if they make any mistake, we see shifts like this thing where the game pretty much just ends. So, cautionary tale there, if you're 3-3-ing, your later mistakes hurt even more because that uh, extra thickness turns into an avalanche that just crashes down on you. And because we've 3 3 and we're kind of like enclosed uh, for the most part in a lot of variations, we don't have potential to develop to fall back on, right? We're giving potential away for those points. And again, that's reflected in uh, what we're seeing here too. We're even seeing that in the other games, the older games. Remember how we showed the Legend 88 game at the start of this? Like how we got from one place to another? Well, the fascinating thing about those older Legend 88 games is Black is hard messing up there too. Like, He's giving away the influence, trying to trying to play, you know, the good old Jusecki. The game's still mostly even, because like, like I mentioned, below the 75 threshold, 70-75 uh, threshold, still even game. But check out one mistake. Black extended one too far, now he's at 70. Because he gave away that thickness? Ouch. White answers? Not the way that the AI wants, but white answer. So we're even again. Again, one too many. Now we've gone... Now we've gone deeper into this, right? Trying to take away the, the influence, because remember, nowadays, especially, your opponent gets to get something if you 3-3 them. Taking it all away? Mistake, because there's larger things to do elsewhere. That's like the biggest thing that uh, 3 3 years have to know. If you're 3 3 your opponent's going to get something. There's larger moves to play elsewhere. You still need your fundamentals more than ever, because you need to know exactly where the next large point on the board is, because if you miss it, you're taking an even greater hit. Like right now, we can say that White's probably winning the game. He's an 83% chance to win. And all he did was just answer his opponent. Took the corner. The 3-3 three, three is now viewed as a mistake because there's so much influence. It's like, no, 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 no. This, you, you don't want to be doing that. Right? Not playing the variation that the AI wanted, obviously. But we're still above that 75 threshold where we can see that, uh, yeah, definite advantage to white because of all of the 3-3 three that's going on. Like, even the AI is like, no, you shouldn't be doing this. And now you've uh, irreparably hurt yourself this game because you tried to 3-3 three, three, then just take everything away. Even the AI is like, that, that's not what I want you to do. Going back to that first uh, Shinzen So Pro game, uh, Pro Nindon game that we saw, Games should look probably more like this, because you see it's even on both sides. It's like dead even. 46, 53, both players are getting something. 
instead of a game like uh, this, for example. Oh, bad example, not this, but a game like this, for example, where Black's like, no, 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 my opponent doesn't get anything. And then the, then the AI is just like, well, then you're going to lose because Go's not played that way. And, and therein lies the bulk of my frustration right now with people who are 3-3. I'm okay with them like playing 3-3s for the most part, now more than ever, because I've come to understand this. Now more than ever, I'm fine with them 3 3 The problem that gets frustrating and annoying is they don't realize that their attempt to take every, literally everything away from your opponent is not good. It's not good at the professional level. Uh, the AI is not recommending it. It's not good for us. But if we make a mistake against it, then sure, it's fine. And it has to be a really, 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 really big mistake. Like, once you're aware of that, you have to assume that it's either just and I don't mean this in a mean way, it's either ignorance that they're playing that way, like, like they don't realize that that's not what they should be doing next, or they're counting on like a 10 to 20% mistake to make that into an okay thing, like uh, the other game which I have apparently closed because I'm an idiot, like back to this one, right? Where the attempt to get rid of everything is an instant 10% mistake on my opponent's part. Which brings us back to the start of the question. How is this a thing now? Well, it's a thing because if our opponent encloses, they're going to get, you know, 3, 6, 9, 12, like 15 points. Cool, cool, cool. If you invade, uh, again, depending on which Chiseki is picked. If you invade, like we showed before, you're going to pick up, you know, 8 to 10 points, maybe if you're lucky. Your opponent is going to get perhaps up to twice as many points. Up to twice as many points as you took. But since you did take 8 to 10 points off them, you can cut that in half. And then, okay, your opponent gets some but it's still going to get some, but, you know, so are you. And that really is all that's going on. We're seeing that the 3-3 three, three can be played early on. We understand mathematically why that's a possibility, but we have to accept that we're taking points. Our opponent's probably going to get points as well, sometimes twice as much. That's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Based on the games that I've seen, uh, you know, that I've played in, uh, I've reviewed, that I've looked at some professionals who've gotten things way, way, way wrong. There are some players out there, I think, who think the new 3-3, like, like we see in this game right here, for example, where we have the 3-4, three, 3-4 uh, three, four, three, four into a 3-3 three, three invasion. I think some players are treating uh, some of these AI Jiseki like some kind of weirdo magic bullet. Like, all I have to do is play this. I prevent them from doing that. I win the game. Done over with but that's not what the ai is saying the ai is saying you can free three and if you do you might gain two percentage points on your opponent but otherwise it's a completely even game at that point in that corner that's an even result that it's not a magic bullet it's not going to just end the game immediately and if your opponent doesn't three three you back that doesn't mean You've won. What it means is that's locally even, and you're going to have to reduce your opponent in the right way at the right time, or you're going to blow every advantage that you just took for yourself with, with those early Jiseki. And if you want to play that way, fantastic. You can. Nothing but respect for that. And if you don't, Mazel tov. You don't have to. Fantastic. There, there's no reason you have to adjust and throw out everything that you've been doing and playing to go ahead and play, you know, the those those other styles, this other like AI style here, because the difference in play isn't that big. It's not really meaningful, even in some games, 
at a professional level. It's, it's just not that impactful in terms of who's going to win and lose. It's just a question of how the game's going to continue. So the next elephant in the room is, if this is true, and I, I hope I've done a pretty good job of showing that it, it seems to be what we've covered so far, like these are just even results locally with, you know, just a couple of percentage points different, um, that even the AI is very particular on when it does and doesn't try to reduce the wall that's being given away and the dangers of doing that reduction wrong. If these sequences are coming with that many things to consider, why are there so many professionals, for example, who are, you know, just hard pushing these variations? Why are, why are there strong, you know, reviewers and content creators who are really hard hitting up some of this uh, newer stuff from the AI? without the warnings why aren't they telling you about uh, like all these different problems that you have to consider if you're going to do this and that takes me back to a conversation that i had with cho Heian, who i had uh, the good fortune of being able to meet when i was down in australia a couple of years back she is for those of you who don't know a one of the only professional female professional nine dons in the world very very exclusive club that she is a member of. She travels around the world when, you know, till the pandemic hit, traveled around the world just teach and go to people in all sorts of different countries. Truly an amazing woman. Nothing but nothing but respect for her. But even though she's around weaker players that often, I, I do remember that she would have to stop herself and try to remember all of the things that, you know, she and other professionals take for granted. Like, she'd go past a variation, or she wouldn't mention something that's really, really obvious to her in a game, because she was beyond that probably in her first year or two of playing. Like, she hasn't had to consider, oh yeah, this could be a problem, but you handle it this way, or this could be a problem, you handle it this way. Or, uh, yeah, we're playing here because, you know, obviously this works with because what's over here. Like, really, really obvious things she'd sometimes forget because those considerations are, like, way, way, way below her level, you know? And I think that's what's, I think that's what's going on here, too. I think a lot of people, people are uh, really pushing some of these variations here because they forget what the majority of players in the world uh, still have to consider. Like, this guy, for example, firmly, firmly residing in that camp. He plays a new uh, Jiseki. He tried to play a new Jiseki, but there's so much else he has to still learn, even at 7 Don, that he, he just wasn't ready to play this way. Because when we got back to here, we were at, what, 80? 85% chance to uh, win for white? Right here, right? Easy mistake to make. And before he tackles, you know, this kind of thing, he really needs to uh, fundamentally address how he got into this position and make sure that, uh, you know, it never happens ever again. And my opinion is a lot of players are currently in that camp. I've said it before and I'll say it again. One of the reasons I'm firmly convinced that I got to eight down the first time is because there are so many players who have this guy's exact same problem. They're taking an even result with the early thing, but they're giving a lot of thickness away. And then a couple of maybe their usual mistakes in their game gets exacerbated by the extra thickness that they just gave away. So it just turns into an avalanche that, you know, swallows them. I still have problems with sometimes even six dons who play traditionally where I can completely dunk on the seven dons who try to play the new stuff. Like, it doesn't even look like it's a fair game because there's just so much more to juggle here compared to uh, a more balanced board that has like a, a balance between you know territory and uh, influence for both players. It, it's harder for one of those things to just kind of turn into like just an utter steamroll and get out of control. Whereas a board like this, for example, one or two moves that are off and yeah, you've been run over. And again, I'm not advising you don't play the new stuff. You can. 
I hope I've helped you understand a little bit more about how to continue the new stuff after you've played it, that you're not immediately freaking out and jumping in and trying to get reduce, reduce everything. Uh, subsequently, you're not playing the new stuff and it's being played against you and your opponent's immediately trying to reduce everything. Again, don't freak out because, you know, that's probably not not really what they should be doing. So just keep your eye on what's the next biggest point on the board and go for it because they're not continuing to build anything later is going to result in them losing the game as long as you don't get frustrated and, you know, do crazy things. That said, I hope this has been a decent lecture on the 3-3 three, three and the ideas behind it, how it's changed from then till now, some common pitfalls you've been perhaps seeing in your games when it's played against you, or maybe you've been playing against it, how to handle both sides of the equation, why that is the way it is, and just an honest look at what these early 3-3s three are and what they aren't. As always, hope this has helped your game, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.